Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. The immune system is the defense system of your body. It's what protects you against foreign invaders as well as cells of your own body that wind up going out of control, for example, cancer. Now, you have a series of nonspecific defenses that defend against a broad range of attackers versus specific defenses, which are cells that will work against one and only one particular kind of attacker or disease. The nonspecific defenses include, in the first line of defenses, some barriers and chemicals. Examples of some of these barriers would be like your skin. Your skin blocks pretty much anything that can't make its way through by going through a cut or something like that. It blocks everything. It doesn't sit there going, you're tuberculosis, you stay out, but come on in, measles. No, it is a nonspecific barrier. You have chemicals such as the juices, digestive juices in your stomach, the gastric juices, that whenever you swallow any of the bacteria that might have been on your food or that you accidentally inhaled but got stuck in the mucus, another nonspecific defense, when you swallow those things, they die in your stomach, thus protecting you against the effects of those fungi and bacteria and such. A second line of defense is once something's managed to get past those outer barriers, once they're in your blood supply or they're in some of your tissues, how else can you defend against them? Well, you've got a whole bunch of cells called phagocytes, which include things like monocytes, which mature into the macrophages that you may have read about, neutrophils, and some other cells. And what they do is they go around and they just eat anything they don't recognize. Imagine you had some kind of psychotic group of kindergartners that whenever they saw something they didn't recognize, yum, 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 they would eat it. That's what they're doing. They help protect you against all sorts of things. You also have various chemicals such as interferon, which is a chemical given off by a cell that's been infected by a virus. It helps alert the other cells around it so that they become more resistant to the virus. Inflammation is another non-specific defense that is used by your body. If you get a cut or a splinter or something, it'll trigger off the release of various chemicals, including something called histamine, which will open up the blood vessels in that area, plus make those blood vessels more leaky. That brings more blood to allow the phagocytes and other white blood cells to get out of the bloodstream and attack whatever it is that caused the injury. When you do need a specific defense, that's when these guys kick into play. Now they attack what are called non-self antigens. In general, an antigen is anything that will trigger off an immune response. We will sometimes talk about HIV being an antigen or tuberculosis could be an antigen. There's actually many different kinds of molecules on the surface of HIV, for example, that act as antigens that your body detects as non-self, i.e. they don't belong in your body. Now, Every B cell, every cytotoxic T cell, every helper T cell, and even these things called suppressor T cells, they respond to one and only kind of, only one kind of antigen. So you must have millions of these different kinds of B cells to be able to attack the various kinds of antigens that you're going to be exposed to over the course of your life. And this is accomplished through some interesting uh, genetic tricks inside some portions of your DNA. Now the B cells, these are defenders that make antibodies. Antibodies are proteins that stick to foreign antigens. Don't get those two confused. It's very easy because they both begin with anti. But the antigens generate the response, which includes the antibodies, which are these little proteins, again, that stick to foreign or non-self antigens. Because these proteins are dumped into the blood supply, which is a fluid, an older name for this is called humoral response because humoral is an older term that means fluid. Now, when a B cell gets activated and is allowed to go on the attack, they mature into what is called a plasma cell. A plasma cell is an active B cell and it is working so hard that it actually will wind up killing itself within not too very long, maybe a week or two. And that's because it's pumping out thousands and thousands of antibody proteins per second. If you stop to think about that, it's insane. If you ever want to get an idea of a good analogy of what a plasma cell is like, go onto YouTube and type in minigun. That's this gun that spits out something like 6,000 rounds per minute. Just sitting there going That's what these plasma cells are doing. They're sitting back maybe in your lymph nodes and they're just going shooting out these antibodies to try to make them stick to the foreign invaders, to target them for destruction. Plus, antibodies can trigger all sorts of other problems for the foreign invaders. 
Now, every time you get an infection and activate the specific defenses, you'll also generate memory cells. Memory B cells are unlike plasma cells. They're not pumping out thousands of antibodies per second, but instead they're just sitting there lying in reserve in case you ever meet that invader again. That's why if you get, say, chickenpox as a kid, you'll never suffer from chickenpox again. Although sometimes if your immune system gets suppressed, like if you're going through chemotherapy or something like that, sometimes you can have a reinfection or if you get stressed and stress kind of reduce the effects of your immune system. You can sometimes develop a secondary infection called shingles. Cytotoxic T cells, instead of working at a distance like the B cells, these get up close and personal. Cyto means cell, toxic means, of course, poison. These cytotoxic T cells, I think of them sometimes like CLT members, where they don't sit at range and attack with cruise missile antibodies. Instead, they're sneaking up close to the bad guys and stabbing them to death. That's what they do. They actually latch onto the membranes of foreign or infected cells or cancer cells, and they start pumping in proteins that burst open the membrane of their victim. Now, they too will form memory cells after an infection is done, and those memory cells will give you an active reserve that can quickly respond to any future infection. The helper T cells are like the generals of your army. They actually don't attack themselves, but they're the ones that give the go signal to the B cells and cytotoxic T cells so that they can go on attack. Additionally, the helper T cells send off lots of signals that will trigger the B cells and cytotoxic T cells to start rapidly doing cell division. So you wind up not having maybe 10 or 20 B cells that work against that infection, but you'll have millions of them. That's one of the reasons why the lymph nodes, where a lot of these uh, cells are being formed, that's why they swell up when you've got an infection. That's why the doctor will sit there and poke you here going, does that hurt? If they're swollen, it's because you're getting some kind of infection going on and you're creating this clone army against them. The helper T cells, they themselves will reproduce rapidly in response to their particular antigen. But they only do that when given the go signal or when they are given the antigen by a macrophage. Now, the suppressor T cells, they come along last. They're the ones that turn off this whole process of a, mounting a defense. They come along, they're kind of like the UN peacekeepers. They come along and say, come on, guys, let's stop fighting, and your defenses go back down. And in fact, when you get sick, usually what makes you feel so crappy is not the disease, it's your immune system using all of your energy to create these millions of new cells. And that's why we don't want to have millions of cells all the time. Yes, that would make you really well defended, but you'd be wasting energy. All right, let's take a closer look at how a helper T cell gets activated. So again, a macrophage goes around and anything it doesn't recognize, in this case, this red blob, it eats. And it goes around and it puts those red blobs, pieces of the red blob, on its surface. Kind of like a police officer, if he's wandering around, he's a non-specific defender. He doesn't only arrest muggers or only arrest burglars. If he sees somebody doing something that he doesn't think is right, he arrests them. Then he takes them down to the station. Now, macrophage breaks them apart. Hopefully the cops aren't breaking apart somebody that he arrested. But he will take photos and then he'll start presenting the photos to various officers or detectives in the different divisions. He'll go to the bank robbing division. He'll go to the kidnapping division. And he'll find the one helper T cell who is responsible for fighting that kind of criminal. And when they dock together, this helper T cell starts to rapidly reproduce. And then he finds the B cells and activates them. The B cells, they may have already bumped into the antigen. They're going, can I go, can I go, can I go? But you don't want your B cells to accidentally get activated just because you encountered one antigen because uh, you don't want to have one virus particle get into you and your macrophages deal with it quickly. You only want to deal with it if there's an actual major invasion. So the B cells have to wait until the helper T cell comes along and says go. When you, they are given the go signal, you wind up with gazillions of plasma cells pumping out their antibodies. That's these little Y-shaped things sticking to the foreign invader. The helper T cells will also say, hey, macrophages, you divide. And so you get more macrophages. And they go to the killer T cells and say, kill them. And the killer T cell says, yeah. And he goes and he starts using his peripherin. That's the name of the protein that they use to stab to death their victims. That's the specific immune defense. This is one of the things that I'm sure that you can't get sick of studying because it is the immune system. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. 
so have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two picks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>